Okay, so you were telling me about uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh and how he came to Akali Baba Fula Singh Ji with a Bainti. Yeah. What was the Bainti about? Well, do you want me to talk about how first they come across each other? Yeah, sure. All right, cool, cool. So Baba Akali Fula Singh Ji, when they were born, they were born to someone named Baba Ishir Singh Ji. Okay. Who was part of the Nishan Waliya Missal. So, I don't know if you know about the missiles. There was about 12 missiles that were set up by Nav- Nawab uh, Kapoor Singh. Hanji. And uh, history goes to write that uh, six of these missiles were part of Buddha Dal, five of them were part of Tarna Dal, and the remaining were part of um, Malbe Village R- um, Rajesi. Okay. R- 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 uh, you know, those guys. They. So Baba Isha Singh Ji was part of one missile already. And then he, his best friend was Baba Nana Singh Ji. And Baba Nana Singh Ji is the fifth Jathadar of Akal Takht and Buddha Dal. Yeah. So whoever was the Jathadar of Akal Takht was also the Jathadar of Buddha Dal as well. Okay. So Baba Isha Singh Ji gives birth to uh, Baba Akali Fula Singh Ji. Right? And the next year is when the Vadda Kalukara happens. So Vardha Kalokara happens and Baba Isha Singh Ji is fighting in that, in the Vardha Kalokara. Right? So when that all takes place, there is such a wound that they get hit with, Baba Isha Singh Ji, that the wound becomes fatal and they're going to die soon. So a few months, they're bedridden and they realize that they're going to leave soon. Yeah. So they, they do a bainti to their best friend, Baba Nana Singh Ji. They say, Baba Ji, you have my son, my son, my son, you have your sangat in your teach him you know and so with that last painti Baba Isha Singh Ji Akal Chalana Kar Deya then Baba Nana Singh Ji raises uh, Akali Baba Fula Singh Ji as Haan if ji. they were their father you know ji. so all their Santhya from Guru Granth Sahib Ji to Dasam Granth Sahib Ji all that is done from Baba Nana Singh Ji so basically Baba Akali Fula Singh Ji was given to Baba Nana Singh Ji at the age of two. They were two years old. Because when Baba Isha Singh Ji gives birth or, you know, has um, Baba Akali Fula Singh, the next year is when they became Shaheed, Baba Isha Singh Ji. So the years leading up to their growth, uh, Akali Ji is raised by Baba Nana Singh Ji, who is the Jathadar of Akal Takht, right? So you can see that right from the very beginning, their mentality has been given by Jathadar. You know, Gee. so that that's pretty cool. Is that like imagine you're 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 grown up by a king? You know, what are you gonna yeah. become? Yes. A king, right? So, Baba Ji grows older, and eventually, when they become they become the Sardar of the Shida Missal, because Baba Nana Singh Ji was the Sardar of the Shida Missal as well as being just the of Buddha the land Akal Takat. So, when Baba Akali Fula Singh Ji eventually become Jatidar of Akal Takht themselves, the six Jatidar, you know, they find out that Maharaja Rajiv Singh and the Pangya Missal are going to clash. Yeah. So Maharaja Rajiv Singh takes over Lahore in 1799. Now their next objective is take over Amritsar. Because they're thinking that I, I can't just have the Raj, uh, you know, uh, state or city. I need to have the spiritual state of city as well, right? Because Amritsar was the 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 kender of the atmak, right? The spiritual center, and Lahore was the the center of rule of power, right? So that's why Lahore and Amritsar are like right next to each other. Makes a lot of sense why the British then put a line straight between Lahore and Amritsar. Yeah. Uh, even though I think at the time of the split, Lahore was eighty percent controlled by six even though they were only like what 20% of the population exactly um so they they that makes sense they wanted to split our political and our so but isn't akal takht our political or was maharaj Ranjit singh not a representative of just six was he a representative of just punjab in general that's a good question uh-huh. and i think you answered it in that point as well okay. that they 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 were not just representing six you know cuz maharaj Ranjit singh was not just the ruler of punjab you gotta remember their rule went all the way to, to Tibet. It went to Kashmir. Wow. It went to Peshawar, all the way down in Af- up to Afghanistan. The only reason some cities are in Pakistan today is because Maharaja Ji Singh took them out of Afghanistan, put them into their Raj. Mm. Like Peshawar was a city of Afghanistan. 
but today is a city of Pakistan. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So their their rule really expanded even to Delhi. Their rule went all the way that way. So it was not just Punjab. Their rule grew a lot. You know. So I thought Maharaja Ranjit Singh came into rule with the grace and blessings of this Khalsa. So, but you're telling me that Maharaj Ranjit Singh is is coming up onto Amritsar, and the Khalsa is saying, "No, this is our city." But I thought they were both one. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna get right in, right into there. Okay. So basically, Maharaj Ranjit Singh, when they took over Lahore, they were about like 19, 20 years old, very young, right? <laughs> wow. Yeah, very young. <laughs> <laughs> the the age we give, you know, the age our, our our youth is like, you know, going to college and thinking that they got like they got 20 years until they become an adult. You know, Maharaj Ranjit Singh is holding up the sword and going to battle. Right? Wow. Um, so they took over Lahore. At this time, all the missiles were separated, right? So the, the missiles grew from that trial we just talked about originally during Baba Isha Singh's time. It grew and grew and grew and became even larger, right? Yeah. And eventually, missiles started to kind of like get their own territory. So someone had Jalandar, someone had Lodiana. Like everyone had their own territories. And they were very conservative of their territories. So the Pangia missile had Amritsar and they were not going to give that up. Maharaj Ranjit Singh was like, all right, so I'm going to fight you guys to get it. Right? And this is before it comes, before that Khalsa picture comes together. When Baba Fula Singh Ji was told by Baba Nana Singh Ji, look, this is what's happening. And Baba Nana Singh Ji was an advocate for Khalsa Raj, as in like the Khalsa should be together. And it hurt them when they heard that the Khalsa is going to fight each other on the Guru's Tarti. Ekta Guru Pumiya. Ekta Vairi Vi Sikh. <laughs> like both sides are sick and they're fighting Guru Ram Das Ji's Tarti. Yeah. So Baba Nana Singh Ji said to Baba Fula Singh Ji, Tu si jau. go, they gave him a thapada, they're like, Tu si jau and roko no. Like they don't know what they're about to do. Right? And we were talking about like why the Sikh Raj might have gone away, right? It went away. And we we're talking that maybe the Sikhs did something that they weren't supposed to do. You know? Right. And at this point, at this point, we had Gurmukhs in our, in our, kind of spear that we're going to pre- prevent that from happening. So, Amo Samane Hogi, Maharaj Ji Singh, the Pangiya Missal, or Amar Samane, and the Pangiya Missal, the, the Sardar is uh, Bibi Desa. She's the head of the Pangiya Missal at that time. And on the on the on on this side, you have the Chakravarti, uh, sorry, uh, Sukracharya Missal, Maharaj Ji Singh himself, right? He was you the, said Bibi Desa. So, Bibi Desa was the leader. So, we, we see a woman. A, a woman. Yeah. Leading one of the missiles. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. So she's incredible. So, so right, they're right on the banks of each other, about to start the war. And Baba Kali Fula Singh comes right in the middle. Right. So the, all the history books say the same thing that they come right in the middle. They take out their khanda and they're like, "What's wrong with you guys? You know? <laughs> Are you guys gone crazy? Yeah. Don't you not see that you're on your other side is another sick, and the on your other side is another sick? You know, I remember um, this Saki heard of Sant Guru Bachchan Singh Ji. Yeah. And they said that during Sant Guru Bachchan Singh Ji's Darbar one day, uh, Ek Singh aya. Oh, Shad Vidyar Thisi. But he came and he was drunk. And Koi kar, koi kar, koi karma hoge, galti hoge, na? He, he must have drank or whatever happened. Koi sangatuj paake, he drank. When he came to the Darbar, all the Singhs were like, Baba Ji, we're going to beat this guy to hell. Right? And Baba Ji stopped them. Like, first take off his chola. You can't touch the chola. Oh, yeah. That's the Guru's chola. Right? Next, they're like, you can't hit his head because the head is, has Guru's cease on it. Uh, the Guru's dada is on it. They're like, you can't hit his body because the Guru's samarpar kita ya. They're like, hon maal lo jina manna. Took away everything. You can't, you can't hit any of these things. <laughs> right? So what are you going to hit? His man, his angar. His man, his angar. Exactly. Yeah. So Babaji said that the way to get him out of this isn't through beating him up. Mm-hmm. You know? So that, because even Sant Indraji Singh Ji says this a lot under Katha. It's like, like we should never, a Sikh should never put their hand on another person's dastar, another Sikh's dastar. You know? Lai karani thik karlo, but don't attack the Sikh he chins. You know? Like, okay, you you might not get along with someone, wrestle it out. Yeah. Right? But you don't have to take off someone's dastar for that. Yeah. Kali Baba Fula Singh raises their voice and says, what are you guys doing, right? Us vele kyunki Brahm ke nisi hai na? Kali Fula Singh ji. Because the Brahmgani spoke, those words hit the heart of Maharaj Ji Singh. Right away, because oh, had nimrata desi. They were filled with nimrata. And we can see that in their character. Because whenever they go uh, to fight anywhere, they go to Guru Ram Das Ji's car first, do or das. Ardas sod ke fed larai kan jan desi. Yeah. You know? And we hear that they have so much dasam bani kant and Guru Granth Sahib bani kant as well. Right. So they had these sanskars in them. So when they heard it, they put their karpan away. 
and they put their hands together. And they're like, Baba Ji, we don't know who you are. But this is such a bowler, yo. Sadi matu te parda pagasi. On the Arab and the Pangyamis said, Okay, Appa, we, we, we surrender at your will. You tell us what to do. At that time, Baba Pula Singh Ji says, They looked at Maharaja Ji Singh, they saw he's capable of Raj. They said, Go Adin to Maharaja Ji Singh. You know, to the Pangyamis. They said, You now stay underneath him and let him control Amritsar. Give your Raj to him. And together, work towards Khalsa Raj. And that's what happened. So Maharaj Raji Singh acquires Amritsar in 1801-1802. On the blessings of Akali Baba Fula Singh Ji. Through Baba, Fa- Baba Fula Singh Ji, then the Khalsa Raj grows. The Khalsa Raj. Yes. You know, all the missiles coming together, Maharaj Raji Singh, you know, kind of leading that way. Right. And behind them is the, the force of the Khalsa. Okay. But one thing to note is that there was still a division between political power and spiritual authority. For example, oh, yeah. I see. Maharaja Raji Singh was the Maharaja of that Raj that was growing, but Akali Baba Fula Singh Ji was still on the seat of Guru Hargobind Ji, which is the Raj of all six, yes. regardless of where they may be living. Har kal takht. Har kal so the Raj Darbar can be in Lahore yes. and run dunyavi politics, Ji. but any policies affecting six and Khalsa Ji. is in Akal Takht. Exactly. Okay. So I know you asked that question a while back, but to kind kind of come back together, that's what yeah. the answer is. Okay, yeah, I've I've heard um, the the to, to the point of like the nimrata of, of Maharaj Ranjit Singh. Mm. One day he was you know going down um, a pathway with his fodja, mm. and there was a kid that was throwing a rock against a tree, mm. and as he was throwing this rock against a tree, he misses the rock flies over and it hits Maharaj Ranjit Singh in the head. And the Fodjis went and grabbed the kid. Hmm. And uh, Maharaj Najit Singh calls out from behind and he goes, Koshana and Ukyo, bring him over here. Right? They bring him over and Maharaj Najit Singh asks the kid, he goes, well, Why did you throw a rock at my head? And the kid goes, uh, Look, I wasn't aiming for your head. I was throwing the rock at the trees. He goes, Why are you throwing a rock at a tree? Yeah. He says, Every time uh, I would hit it properly or hard enough, a fruit would fall from the top so that I could eat. Hmm. Maharaj Ranjit Singh gets a bit pensive and he looks at the kid and he says, Khalse Raj Jaisa Padvite, that throne that the Guru has blessed me to sit on, that has the name of the Sikh Raj, yeah. you've hit that beard, you've hit that tree. So if that's the case, then the Guru should reward you with so much more than just a fruit. Hmm. That tree that you were hitting was worldly, but the tree you've hit now, it belongs to the Khalsa. Hmm. So he turns to his soldiers and he has them bring out cases of gold hmm. and kapde and they give it to the kid. Wow. And that is a, a level of, of sochani that is very... I mean, I can't see a single politician that would do that today. Yeah. You know, so that that's very grounded in in in, in Guru Saab. What are some of the things you know about his personality? Maybe some sakis that you've heard about Baba Fula Singh or Maharaj Maharaj Ranjit Singh. Maharaj Ranjit Singh's personality. Well, I can tell you one thing is that like we were talking about Nimrata. Yeah, they have that because you know that saki about. Um, I'll go through it. So one time Maharaj Ranjit Singh comes in contact with a Muslim Bibi. Uh, who was uh, there for like Nachgana kind of stuff, right? Right. Um, upon seeing this BB, Maharaj Ji Singh thodi mohito jandeya, and they they then get married to her. You know, when Baba Fula Singh Ji finds out that the Maharaja has married to a dancer, basically, right? They're like, what kind of uh, what kind of image does that show, right? Yeah, like, cause like, as a Maharaja, you do get married a lot, right? Because of, it's con- it's like conquest, right? You get married to one area, then y- what happens is that that area becomes a deen to you. So you keep going forward. That, that's that's another uh, niti of Raj. Oh, right. hai, you know? And we can't we can't really put the thing of like, how could a Sikh be married to like thirty people or something? Right? It's just that's tactics of rule, right? right? But when when you get married to someone out of lust, there was no other agenda there, right? Right. And then that's kind of like what image is that showing, right? So Baba Akali Fula Singh Ji said that uh, that this is wrong, right? One day, 
Maharaja Rajit Singh came to Darbar Sahib like he would normally do. Right. And Darshan duty which I see. They, as they sat forward their foot into Darshan duty, Baba Kali Fula Singh Ji came and said, Stop! Ruk ja kaane ya! Because <laughs> they're blind for one eye, right? Kana means someone Kana. that doesn't have an eye. Exactly. Right. Well, yeah. And so they're, they're like, Ruk ja! Na? Like, you don't step one more for, forward. This dharti is not for those that forget their path to the Guru. Right. Right. Haan, patita vaste, no problem. Papiya vaste, no problem. But tankai vaste ni. Tankai, like patita and papi means like such a pasha. I am a girea hoya manuk. Mirijere karama bo mare. Minu bakshlo. Right? It's not, but when when you walk with those pops in your head and your heart, and you kind of like, nah, it's okay. It'll be fine. Right? Like I did that y- yesterday, but it's okay. You kind of like look past them, and then you're tankai to the pant. Because you have done something that you've broken the rules or regulations at the punt without you, remorse, without remorse, and without uh, pa for your guru, without, without any type guru. of like loving fear for your guru, exactly. Right, so, so, so for that reason, Akali Fula Singh considered Maharaja a tankai, right? And they said, Tenu Saja Lagigi, right? And Maharaja at that moment, they could have been like, I am the king of this rule, I'm the Maharaja of this rule, right? I'm not just the king, I'm the Maharaja, right? Maharaja means that you're a king of many kings, right? Like you're an emperor, basically. S- he could have said all that stuff, but he didn't. Yeah. Instead, he says, Satabachan, what tankha do you want to give me? At that time, Fula Singh Ji said that you got 21 lashes on your body, right? And uh, on, in the Darbar Sahib Parakarma, there, is, uh, there used to be a pipal da drakht. They, uh, neem da, sorry, neem da. And then they tied up ma- the Maharaja to the neem. They took off their shirt, you know, the chola. And they're about to give them lashes. And at that moment, Babaji stopped. The person was giving lashes. And they said, Bas. Oh, Sharan Vichya Gaya. He came to the Sharan. This is all we want to see. Right. Right? Haan je akar ta khanda. Fe taam jirur aur a soda karna si na. But because he, he melted. Before, because he said to the Khalsa that you give me whatever saja you want to give me. Bas, oda tu samjho pura ho gaya hai na karam. And then they told Babaji, ke, uh, Babaji told Maharaja, ki 21 days. Spent those 21 days doing Seva Talangarha, which we, the Sakhi we know, right? So it's crazy that uh, such a huge Maharaja knew his place in the Guru's Darbar. Ji. Knew that the, the authority that Babaji is sitting on is higher than his authority. Right? Because Maharaja is just the ruler of this world, but the person who sits on a Kaal Takht throne, the Takht of a Kaal Takht, the ruler of both worlds. Right. And then you were saying that, that we were going to war. And uh, Maharaj Ranjit Singh was trying to expand his uh, Raj. Yeah. And he gets to Multan and he finds that he's losing battle after battle. Yeah. He sends uh, Sher Singh. Yeah. Sher Singh loses the war. Um, Maharaj Ranjit Singh says, I figure there's one place I can go now. Yeah. And so then he goes into Akali Baba Fula Singh Ji's. Uh, no, he goes to Harmandar Saab. Yeah. He does an Ardas at Harmandar Saab. Um, and when he does the Ardas, what does he see? He sees Baba Ji come out of the Darbar. Why? You know? And he's like, Guru Ramdas, you answer my prayers. That Baba Ji can go fight for us. So they did a das, Ke Baba Ji, Multan di jari lrai hai kiya. Yeah. To see fateh kar kiya ho. Bo deir ho gi ya. Like, I've sent my fojah there. And they, so there was three kille in Multan. Right? The, the fojah were able to take two over. There was one third, third one left. Right? They were not able to take over that kille. That kille had four doors. And the easiest door they had they had targeted, they were not able to go inside. And because what would happen is that in the they had made like a little gufa within ex, next to the, the fort, and so all the, the soldiers and stuff they were trapped in this one like underground cave you can say right, and the animals were dying right their horses they were dying and because that disease spread and every single day hundreds a uh, hundred soldiers would die you know so I think uh, Maharaja sent maybe. Uh, 20,000 soldiers something wow. like that 20,000, 30,000 soldiers and so out of them 100 would die every single day so Maharaj is like Baba Ji, you want to do something you know I, spent, I sent thousands of soldiers so much money is being spent every day so much lives are being spent every day and we're not getting anywhere you know we're this close to victory but we just can't do it right you know and what I think is sometimes like in life things like that happen as well you know we when we think that Sade Hat which has Sab Kush we go to such extreme levels to achieve whatever we're trying to achieve. Now, w- sometimes what happens is that you get to the right last door, the last door just won't open for you. 
you know just like I did everything I'm at the last point I can make it now to whatever I'm going to try to make it to but it just won't open you know at that point just Guru Sahib is showing us that like it's just that our ego needs to break that's why the last door is still closed so, so Babaji when they were told by Maharaja you know, and then at that time Babaji they blew their shank you know and the Khalsa forge the Akalis because Babaji was a Nihang Singh right? all the Nihang Singh forge and they knew if Babaji's shank goes off it's time for battle you know they're always preparing for battle so Akali Baba Fula Singh Ji looks Maharaj Ranjit Singh in the eyes, pulls out a conch shell, a sunk, blows it, 500 Nihang Singhs get together. And uh, you were kind of explaining the yeah. difference between the regular soldiers and the Khalsa Forge coming together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so the difference between the regular soldiers and the Akali Forge were that the Akali Forge had Bani Di Kamai. Okay. What, what was it that 20,000, 30,000 soldiers didn't have? Th- that, that was it. Babaji's Kamai was amazing, immense. 1230 uh, Amartya you know. On top of that, you know, Chandi Divar, Nitin Toba Chandi Divar, you know, Akal Ustatta Paat, Asa Divar the Kirtan. They, they had so much name to their life every single day, you know. We're, we're just, we have just become camp sings, you know. Sunday sixth we become camp sings. Camp sings was <laughs> camp you know. And that, that doesn't happen all the time, right? Camps maybe four or five a year, you know. At least Sunday six <laughs> years comes every week, right? So Babaji blew their shank. Five hundred Akali for Jangatiar Bertiar right on their Kodi and they're they're ready to go, right? And Babaji goes to Multan and believe it or not. You know, they, 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 uh, take over. Multan. So 500 Khalsa Fodge did what 20,000 regular Sikh soldiers couldn't do. Exactly. exactly. And the difference was Barney. Barney di Kamai. When Babaji was born, you know, like uh, often, uh, this is a Sikh sanskar is Naam Karan. Kanji. You know, Naam Karan sanskar. They, what is it? Like, when a child is born, the child is brought to Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj Sharan. And Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj then gives a hukkanama, a upadesh, right? And within that teaching, within that shabad, within that prayer, the first uh, line, from the first line, the first letter, is then given to that child as their name, right? Yes. That, that is used as their name, right? So for Baba Fula Singh Ji, the hukkanama that came during their Janam Sanskar was... Firth firth pete jan sadhu Pure gur samanjaya Aan sagal bid kaam na aave Har har naam te aya So there, the, the name that came was Firth firth pete jan sadhu That the Guru has taught me Pure gur samanjaya The Guru has taught me That if you have to walk to the ends of this world To find a sadhu Then don't wait Walk Keep walking Keep walking Keep walking until you meet a sadhu Keep walking, keep walking to you meet a sadhu. Firth, firth, pete, jan sadhu. Baba Fula Singh Ji was that sadhu that came to this world. You know, that Akali sadhu. Not only did they have that Shastra Vidya, they knew how to get on a horse. They knew how to take care of their horse. They, there's so much that goes in just that one aspect, right? Yeah. Taking care of a horse, feeding the horse, what it needs, the masale it needs. There's so much science behind that. That the relationship you need to have with a horse is just like a human being. Horses and the person riding the horse, they need to be in sync. You know. I remember when I was um, a little tangent about horses. Uh, I remember when I went horse riding, and this one, the 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 horse trainer, he said that the horse can tell what you're thinking or which direction you want to go through because your veins and your legs are sending messages to that horse's stomach. So the horse's stomach is picking up what, which direction you're thinking. So the, the horse trainer said that, like, I don't have to pull my, um, that, you know, what, the, the, yeah. the, the, the thing. I don't have to pull it. I just think where I want the horse to go and it will go because we have years of experience with each other. You know? wow. So Babaji's Jeevan had that element the Sulbirta, but then at the same time they were a sadhu, you know, and they they were what the world was waiting for. Yeah, but this world is for the saints. You know, Bhagat Kabir says that this world is for the saints, but taskar bethe 
but robbers have sit on are sitting on this world when they shouldn't be here you know tartipar na vyapai but the world can't take it anymore unko lahe lahe unko lahe lahe take these guys off but the bg says that they are meant to be here the sadhus are meant to be here I mean, I think a lot of that just answers then why, uh, you know, what I thought was called Saraj was really a Sikh Raj. Um, whether we see that culturally or whether, however we want to see it. But at the end of the day, like, there's no real definition for for what a Kal Saraj could mean. Yeah. I mean, the other day I heard someone say, you know, Raja bar nawasata nuki chayla ya. What do you need to be a Raja? Can the Raja uh, rules over his Praja? When someone comes and asks for something, the Raja has the ability to give something. And can they say, Aap anu hon jade gaun bakshaya maharaj ne baar peje ke If someone ever needs our madat, Sikh Panth is sitting at such a spot where we can go and provide that madat. And that in its own form is Raj within our own lives. Right, so I'm sure there's like different layers of Raj, um, but yeah, I, the biggest curious question I had was just, um, you know, during the time of uh, Guru Tegh Bahadur Pacha's Shahidi, he says to Pai Mati Das Ji, when Pai Mati Das Ji kende ki, tanu saakit pata hai, jado kende ki ma Maraj hukum karo, ma Lahore te Delhi di eternal etkar kano. Guru Tegh Bahadur Pacha says ki tar dekolo. Uh, where did you get so much power to be able to take the brick of Lahore and the brick of Delhi and you know to get things started yeah. <clears throat> and he says I'm, I'm over here handling a, a sea and ocean of power and you're not able to hand, uh, handle a droplet yeah. and when he says that um, he says Maharaj <laughs> Then bless me, ki main jo ho raha hai, ho sa saka. Right? Te Guru Teg Badr Paatshah Ji says ki, koin, eh vi jo ho raha, eh vi lor raha. Eh jedi, jedi shahid di ya, anytime we've heard about shahid di, jedi hakumat ya samay di, oh de ser te khun laga da ya. Right? So, at that time, it was the, the Mughal Sultanate, the shaheeds, the khun of the shaheeds, it colored the karm of the Mughal Sultanate. So the same way we have karm for individuals, we do as nations as well. And killing such big hastis, bhagats, sants, we read in Sukhmani Sahib, the natija of that type of thing, it led to the fall of the Mughal Sultanate. So oftentimes I look at other rajas that are performing the same thing and I go, it's just a matter of time. We see in history, there's not been a single Raj that's lasted forever. And every Raj thinks, I'm going to last forever. So when I you know, read about the fall of what was Maharaj and Ajit Singh's Raj, I got to thinking, what mistakes did we make as six? And it seems that even though our Raja was following you know, the beck and order of Akal Takht, that somewhere along the way, um, we lost our way. And just like in battle, when uh, Guru Gobind Singh Pacha says, Ki, jab lag ka, uh, go ahead, tell me. Jab lag, uh, rahe niyara, tab lag tej diyo, yeah. So as long as the Khalsa stays separate, stays uh, away from the world, I'll help them. The other thing he says is, um, I will only... Uh, so there was a jung where Guru Gobind Singh Pacha is telling the Khalsa to hold the line hmm. and the Khalsa that was up front they started thinking well Maharaj we got him now these guys are running away let's go get him they run off to go get the the uh, people hmm. that were pushing forward Guru Gobind Singh Pacha gets on his gorda and leaves hmm. when the Khalsa realized Oh my God, Maharaj left. They run after him, a couple of them. They go to stop Guru Gobind Singh Ji, he won't even listen. Then they do an Ardas Bainti to Nila, Maharaj's Koda. Yeah. And oh, Nila bhi koi right? Of course, Maharaj di seva karan. He stops. Guru Gobind Singh Pacha starts laughing and goes, You guys have been too nice to Nila. You guys, uh, 
You guys have made him fall in love with you. Tell me, what is it? They go, Maharaj, please come back to the battlefield. He goes, I, I told you straight. If you're not going to listen to my hukum, I will leave. So sometimes I think, did we pass a line that we weren't meant to? Did we, did we get into this ark that we weren't, weren't supposed to step into? That we had to see these kalukare. We had to see even the shahidiyah of Chirasi. What is happening? I mean, on the other hand, you know, <laughs> Khalsa doesn't worry about that kind of stuff because at the end of the day, but I mean, it still makes you, it makes you wonder, ki, you know, even today there's bandi things that are tied up beyond the time that they're supposed to be in there. There's water rights that were not being given. Farmer bills that made no sense and were thankfully recalled. And there's so many things that happen even modern day that you kind of look at it and you go, what is it that is irritating people about what the Khalsa is? Because time and time again, when you look at what the Khalsa is meant to be, they are this beautiful being tied to Garbani, justice, truth, and above all, Prem. Prem de vech pej ke o Maharaj nu lab lendea. Maharaj nu lab ke chad di kalaj rendea. Una de, you know, Nahang Singh sa ki, it doesn't matter if I have a jutti, it doesn't matter if I have a house. My house is the Nili Shatri of Akal Purk, is the blue skies. So, what I find really interesting is how do we really define what Raj even is? Up until this conversation, a part of that definition for me was Maharaja Ranjit Singh's Raj. Mm. And now I look at it and go, well, wait a minute, you know. Why were we pushing into Afghanistan? What was the goal? A goal of a Khalsaraj wouldn't be world dominance by killing people. Well, they weren't. Well, Multan started because uh, the Nawab refused to pay taxes okay. to ma the Maharaja. So Multan was already under the, the, the control of the Khalsa, uh, under control of Maharaja Riji Singh. It was just that the Nawab Aki ho gaya and he's like, he wasn't paying taxes. When Maharaja asked him, like, why aren't you paying? He's like, yeah, like, alright, it's right. time to fight then. Yeah. So, I, so was Maharaja Ranjit Singh's Raj Khalsa Raj or was it not? I would say, yes, it was a Khalsa Raj. The reason being this. Okay. Gurmukh sab, sab vapar pala hai. That a Gurmukh, no matter what they do, Whatever they do, if that Gurmukh is doing it from Saj Avastha, right? As in like Saj Avastha means like being in tune with, with, with the Hukam. Yeah. When they're in tune with the Hukam and they're, they're participating in whatever they're participating in, Guru da Rang os te lag janda. So, whatever they're a businessman, Guru da Rang will go there. There, Vapari Guru the Rang will go there. The Raja, the Guru the Rang will go there as well. So Maharaja Riji Singh is covered with the with divine Gurbani throughout their whole life, you know, um, up until the fact where they're they were participating in Amrit Vela, they have nicknamed their Rat Van Gursik in that way, you know. Then their fragrance of Gursik is rubbing off on their rule, you know. And yes, there's been great rulers before too, right? But we never had a sick ruler, right? Yes. So, so having a sick ruler just shows that those values, sanskars, that are the most purest, should exist in a sick in a Khalsa rule, right? And I would say that they did they exist. You know, there was no oppression, as far as I understand of history that we can read, right? I wasn't there. Janiyapa itihas pardeya sundeya. So no pata ei pata lada ki Maharaja had imposed the most justice as he could. So for me, that I would consider that Khalsa Raj. Yeah, and to that point, I would call it Khalsa Raj as well, yeah. because even when he was constructing uh, gold onto Harmandir Sahib, he was donating equal amounts of gold to mandirs and mosques. Yeah. 
If he built a Gurdwara, he would build a Mandir in a mosque. And when a Mandir in a mosque was built, he would mandate that there's education centers that are built with it. Mm-hmm. they are given. Literacy rates were at an all-time low. On, on a level, that is what the Khalsa does. Yeah. Right? It pushes uh, other religions to grow, pushes education to grow, it pushes people to get off of the streets and get off of drugs and get off of alcohol and, and, and focus on their, their family growth. Yeah. And I think that he did a brilliant job of that. Obviously, we know the rest. The, the British come in, they start buying Kade, um, you know, books from everybody, start burning them um, in, and, 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 and completely tank the literacy rate that we have. Um, so, yeah, I agree. It, it was definitely Kal Saraj. Baki Maharaj, Maharaj didn't get down there as to why um, and how that Raj, uh, you know, went the way that it went. Yeah. Um, but I think from a... F- from a political science perspective, the best form of ruling government that you can have, um, funny enough, is a kingship. In a democracy, you see that uh, in a two-party system, there's millions of people that don't vote. There's millions of people that don't get heard. There's millions of people that don't have access to health care, mm-hmm. basic funding, just being able to live, mm-hmm. Right. In an oligarchy, it's it, all of the money is pulled towards one group of people, right? In a socialist or communist perspective, what ends up happening is the same thing. Um, normally, the people that are ruling the state hold the money and the people suffer, even though the ideology behind it is that everyone should get the money. And I think that what's unique about the Khalsa, even though a lot of people like to say that Guru Nanak Dev Ji would have been a socialist, right? Or he would have, uh, Sikhi is something that would go into a democracy. Or I don't see any examples of that in history. No. I think all the examples I see in Sikh history are Jathidari, Guruship, and Raj, yeah. right? And when you take a kingship with a humble king that has something to bow down to, and when that something is <laughs> Khalsa themselves, you know, it's a Kal Takht, it's Harmandir Sahib, it's Guru Ram Das Pacha Sharan, then you can never be led astray. So the decisions that you're making are with the Rang of Maharaj. Exactly. Completely agree. Yeah. And I think that if in a kingship you can get that type of king to exist, your people will always be taken care of. Yeah. You know, even um, the current, um, I don't know if he's current anymore, but back in 2015, there was a Moroccan king and he would listen to his people, what his people need, what was, what was happening. And he would step out of his way to make sure that no one was suffering. Maharaj Ranjit Singh similarly would disguise himself at night, go sit down with people inside of his Raj and see ki loki kya ki raya. What is the, what's the information on the ground about the Raj? Word on the street. What's the word on the street? And how can I help people? You'll never find, you know, President Trump or President Biden mm-hmm. out in the streets listening. And again, they don't have to because we have political systems set up not to do that. And that's, you know, that's uh, all over, mm-hmm. right? Um, world politics and world dominance or world uh, theories have always shifted. And we're in like a, a globalized state now. But looking at Khal Saraj, as globalization was happening, you were telling me about, and I've seen pictures, um, Maharaj and Jeet Singh used to recruit generals from all over the world. I've seen a picture yeah. of an Italian general that had a full dara yeah. and case because you were telling me he has a requirement that you have to keep your case and dari. Yeah. And so it was really interesting to see how the Sikh Raj was trying to keep up to globalization that was catching up. And then you have East India Company enter. Yeah. But then you don't have another Raja. Hmm. So the although the... I was saying the best political system is a kingship. The kingship's biggest weakness is finding the next king. Yeah. Now, if you're a guru or a mahapurk, you can find a way. But when you're a king, you know, playing statesman, yeah. how do you choose the next king? How do you make sure? And again, Maharaj Nadi Singh's Raj didn't fall because of secession planning. It fell because of intervention from East India Company. But regardless, I think where we are today is that they find it very hard to follow a singular leader. 
until someone with Pagti, like Akali Baba Fula Singh Ji, steps forward with a kanda in their hand again and says, listen, this person is speaking the truth. Let's follow them. Let's listen to them. Let's hear what they're saying. But sometimes I feel like we're really afraid of of being okay with listening to, to, to people or listening to someone because it means escaping the chicken coop. We're all in a chicken coop. And what I mean by that is we've, we're so used to being in, fenced off inside of a little cage that that's as far as we think. We want to um, find a nice partner, have children, get money, and have grandchildren and pass away, you know, while following the Guru's hukum. But the Nyarapon is gone. The freedom is gone. We are slaves to systems, whether that's capitalism, whether that's democracy, whether anything, just point your finger at anything. We can only have our thoughts be about Maharaj if we start focusing on Maharaj. And there's a there's Bani by Guru Amardas Pachaji that I'm going to pull up right now, where Mara says, uh, Man mela hai duje pai, mela chauka mele thai, mela khai fir mel vadai, man mukh mel dukh pavanaya. Man mela hai duje pai, mela chauka mela thai. What that means is, the mind, it's polluted by this duality of love. Love for money, love for all the things that mela choka mele thai. So what happens when the mind becomes polluted? Well, we're cooking up what we're gonna do all day, right? So where we're cooking that kitchen, which is the mind, is dirty. And if that's dirty, then your dwelling, your house is dirty. Mela kai fir mel vadai manmuk mel dukapavnea. Then you eat filth, and as a manmuk, you become more and more filthy. Because of this filth, the filth being our conscious and subconscious minds, our decision making becomes so heavy on what we see. You and I were talking earlier about how we imprint easy, like when we watch a scary movie, we have scary dreams. That's everybody. But some people, it's not immediate. But everybody has a subconscious brain. When they see actions, when they see movies, when they scroll through TikTok all day long, Whatever is on there is imprinting on their brain. Mm. That is the mal that is within their house. So what ends up happening is, Mara says, Mele nirmal sab hukum sabai se nirmal jo har saache pai nanak naam vase man antar gurmukh mal chakavnaya. The filth, um, the filthy and the immaculate are all subject to Maharaj's hukum. They alone Se nirmal. Only they are nirmal. Only they are clean. Johar sache pai. Who Maharaj wants to be clean. Who Maharaj wants to follow, you know, what's what's supposed to happen. Nanak naam vase man antar gurmukh mal chakavarnaya. Maharaj, through their naam, comes deep within our minds of gurmukhs and they clean that filth. So what ends up happening is our, our minds are so heavily based on what we're reading and what we're living in. Sadly, we look at Barney and go, I don't understand what that means, therefore I don't want to read it. But Barney, whether you understand it or not, is going to clean your brain. So when you take the time to fight your mind and read that Barney, what's really happening is you won't be in decision making that's influenced by your subconscious mind that's going to end up hurting you. Marad says, you know, you're tied up in this spider web that you're spinning all day long, enticed by Maya. And at the end of the day, you're the one that's going to fall face first into that web. Mm -hmm. So what that told me is, every time I'm making decisions based on my own mind, I'm going to lead to failure in Dukh. But if I just take the Guru, God's guidance as to where we need to go, then nothing can go wrong. When you become samarpa to the Guru, you start reading Gurbani, you start doing Nam Simran, and you know that your Guru is going to have your back, how can you be afraid? How can you be afraid of anything? You can, you can be placed in hell 
and you would know that my guru is there and hell would freeze over it's like, it's like that gazal by uh by namnaji jat rasatan ot tihari rasatan means hell that i'm gonna go to hell i know i'm gonna go to hell but ot tihari on the way there i'm gonna grab your arm <laughs> i'm gonna help i'm grab your arm the way there. just take me there you know yeah. there was actually uh by nandalal ji speaks to a uh, bb long story short and he's with another gursik and uh you know the gursik hears the bb say that i know guru gobind singh ji is god and he says you got to be careful saying that you know i've heard that if you say guru gobind singh ji is god you can go to hell mm. and uh she laughs and she goes i knew what hell was before i met guru gobind singh ji mm. after meeting him and after he started living in my my heart mm. i've realized that he is heaven <laughs> and that if i am going to go to hell then hell would fall at my feet and thank me for giving darshan of guru gobind singh ji and even hell would be liberated and made into heaven like as i really could not say that is the nischay par oh sava sik jang aajve maut aajve ghar vich kuch ho jave mainu ki hoya na mere naal mera guru a this is the fearlessness of the khalsa This is why 506 were able to do what 20,000 couldn't. Couldn't. Because they don't care about their bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Baba Banda Singh Bahadur goes and in the end him and his soldiers get arrested and as they're being pulled through the streets people are throwing tomatoes and bricks and all of these things and they start laughing. Not the people, the things that are tied up. The people pause. Ha sakato rahe hain tusi why are you laughing? They laugh and they go you can throw all the bricks and tomatoes you want but our guru is with us you can kill this cloth this chola that is this body asi dawara janm la ke ehi sirhand fate karna hai we will come again and we will take this land everybody froze do you know how scary it is going up against someone that strongly believes to a point that you can't kill me yeah ਨਾ ਉਹ ਮਰੇ ਨਾ ਠਾਗੇ ਜਾਏ ਜਿਨ ਕੇ ਰਾਮ ਵਸੇ ਮਨਮਾਏ ਸਾਡੇ ਮਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਰਾਮ ਆ ਅਕਾਲ ਪੁਰਖ ਆਪ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਮਾਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਕਦੇ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਦੈਟਸ ਵਾਟ ਮੇਕਸ ਸਿਕਸ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਹੋਲ ਸੋ ਨਿਰਲੇਪ ਚੜ ਦੀ ਕਲਾ ਐਂਡ ਫੀਅਰਲੈਸ ਨੋਬਡੀ ਕੈਨ ਟੱਚ ਹਿਮ ਐਂਡ ਐਵਰੀਬਡੀ ਇਜ਼ ਅਫਰੇਡ ਪਾਈ ਬੋਤਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਪਾਈ ਗਰਜਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਵੈਨ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਫਾਈਟਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਟੋਲਡ ਅਸ ਅ ਸਾਖੀ uh we've heard the sakhi before but there was one part if you can just repeat that one part for me so the moguls have surrounded them they've shot them down they're laying on the floor they get back up they're not able to move and what do they do with their eyes alone and what happens with the moguls they stare at them now with their eyes <laughs> and the 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 writer of that has ratan singh pangu they write that that garja singh bota singh they were like i'm going to kill you just with my eyes you know but just by staring you down i'm going to be able to kill you wow yeah. and that, and that's the thing it it terrifies people i told sahib ajit singh this uh this story um a sea singh and i were walking down the road and this christian prachadak waves us down and he says uh he gets into a long conversation with us figures out our beliefs things like that and then he asks are you not afraid to go to hell and are you at peace and i remembered that bb that i just told you about mm. and by nand lal ji's ghazal yeah and i was like mera ta pata nahi but a gursik even if they go to hell hell would bow down wow. so we're not afraid of hell and about being peace a gursik meets their god every single day yeah. they don't need to worry about the afterlife yeah. they're living in the afterlife yeah. every moment when they meditate they meet a kalpurak when they go to the gurdwara and see guru granth sahib ji you're looking at a kalpurak yeah yeah it might be our own filth that doesn't let us see it but that doesn't change the fact yeah. that it's happening just cuz a kid doesn't know that it's being fed milk to sustain its life doesn't mean it's not going to sustain its life If you go and see Guru Granth Sahib ji you've met God it doesn't matter if you have the ability to recognize it 
And I'll be honest, I think what got me when we said that was the fear in his eyes. Because everything he was talking about so far was about how afraid he is about ending up in hell. And and I I saw his nitr change and go, well, then what do you think about Jesus Christ? What does your religion say about Jesus Christ? Mm. Our goal was not to shake his faith. Mm. But when they saw the answer of these, you're not even talking about your guru. You're talking about gursiks. And they're laughing in the face of hell. What does that mean for us? And I was like, Koi na sonea, Sara jag samundarea, Jesus vi ek lehr sagi, Chardi gila ma purkya, Don't, a, a sixth job is to tell you to read the Bible. It's to tell you, you know, to 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 find your soul and, and to get to the charan of, of God. However, you know, what are you, what is your path? Naam jopo seva karo, Chardi gila, right? And I think that, that calmed him down. And then I saw the fear go away from his eyes when we were like, yeah, no, Jesus is legit. But the difference, I think, afterwards when we thought about it was, just saying the statement, because you know it's true, your guru is with you. It can shake the roots of anybody, not just any, any particular faith including ourselves. So it's a, it's a self-reflection of what does it mean to be Khalsa? What does it mean to be Nirlip? To have Nirpata? And how do those things add up into reading Gurbani? Why should I read Gurbani if I don't understand it? Well, it gives birth to the things we just talked about. Yeah. It's your Guru's Hukam. And when you follow your Guru's Hukam, you get blessed with all the Prashad. Yeah. yeah. And those all combining into a Kali Baba Fula Singh Ji's Panjso Singhs. And how today we are we are at probably one of the most peaceful times in history as a panth. I mean, I know we have a lot of turmoil, but we are outside of that land of Punjab where we can walk into our bedrooms at any point and sit down and not have to worry about food and not have to worry about, you know, where's our next paycheck going to come from and all that kind of stuff. So much of the panth, I think we're the richest we've ever been in our history. But somehow in this time of peace, we're forgetting how to become Kali Baba Fula Singh Ji's 500. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good way to put it. If only we could figure it out, right? Yeah. But it does make sense like what you're saying because think about it. 20,000, 30,000 people that are fighting. Yeah, okay, we can say they're part of Maharaja Ji Singh's army. But I, I would say a great percentage of them must be six, right? Like besides the Muslims and the Hindus and the Christians, that they were working with Maharaja Ji Singh. And like the, you said, the Fr French general and the, the, the European generals that are with them. Uh, you know, Tika, we had that percentage, but then we had a great percentage of our six as well. You know, what did those 500 Akalis have that the other six didn't? Oh, we say Kisi, yeah. right? So I think today we have this concept that. You know, every Sikh is the same. You know, but mm -hmm. that, that goes back to this whole system we we're talking about. Like, Sikh is about selection. You know, there there is no democratic kind of system because not everyone's spiritual life is the same. You know, Virle Kaike. It, it was Virle Kaike then during Maharaj Ji Singh's time. It was Virle Kaike then Guru Nanak Dev Ji's time. By Lana Ji Uthe, sir, became Guru Angad Dev Ji. It was Virle Kaike still today too. That the concept will never change. You know, it'll never become the majority will be from Brahmanis. It'll always be the very few, the few of the few. I think what's sad to see, though, is even in the previous generation, you have a lot of netanimis yeah. who may not know the art, who don't know what's going on, but they still do netanim. Yeah. And I think what I'm noticing in our generation more than anything is the the why culture. Yeah, it hurts, man. It hurts. I don't need to do Nam Simran. I'm a nihilist. Yeah. I keep my kids to keep my, my family happy. I like... At, if, we need to do a better job of getting together and answering questions. Yeah. You know? 100%. So if anyone does have questions, there's a lot of English speaking people that can answer those questions. Yeah. And I don't think while we've been in the diaspora, we've had so many English speaking Prachadiks. No. I think in, in, in E13 alone, there's, you know, about 30 people that are all learning Vidya, that are all like understanding how to answer these questions. Because when I came into Sikhi, I was at a point where I, I either wanted to be atheist or jump completely into Sikhi. 
I knew there was going to be no more middle ground. And I still have like a, a note on my uh, phone where it says, why Panjbaniya? Why Japji Sab? Why do we read it? Why do I need it? Nam Gato Japana. What's the purpose of all of this? So it's not wrong to ask questions, but stop asking questions just to hear uh, reaffirmations. <laughs> And if anybody says otherwise, then I'm going to walk away. Asking questions to grow is one thing, but asking questions for the sake of reaffirming your own beliefs, it's just a waste of everybody's time. You know what's funny is, uh, I remember I was telling you that uh, when uh, Akali Baba Fool listing was going to go to Multan, and there was four doors to that last killa, uh, yeah. and one of the the easiest one. That's one. That's the one they were keep banging on, right? They're firing upon it, and they're they're trying to go in, but they couldn't go in. Ma, when Akali Baba Fula Singh got there, and they asked Sabza the Sher Singh, right? They're like, uh, so which which door is the easiest that you think? And he's like, this one, Babaji. This is the one we've been attacking. This is the easiest to get through. And Babaji's like, which one's the hardest? And then uh, Shea Singh was like, I think the hardest is on the the west corner. Like that one we're not going to touch because we know it's very heavily infiltrated, right? It's fortified. Babaji's like, we're going to go through that one. The hardest <laughs> one. We're not going to go through the easiest one. <laughs> we want that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything's possible. Why go through the easiest one? Make our guru look like a joke. We'll go through the hardest one. <laughs> you know, their mentality was just different, man. <laughs> That's why they got the name Akali. Why were they called Akalis? Because they have won over death. They literally won over death. You Why? know, they looked at that in the faith and said, they said, You are my servant. You were the servant of Guru Ramdaji's house. You don't come near to that person. You know, Jete Jiya Jiya He La Saha Ji Wale Ta Ke Asaha. Maharaj says that if all those beings that take breath, it is in the Guru's hands to make them live without breath. If he wanted to, you know. Kira thap de paatshahi. Laskar kare swaha. Laskar means armies. Swaha means mitti. That Guru said can take a uh, kira and give a thapada to the kira, make him to a paatsha and fight armies and make them to dust. You know? It's the power of the Guru. You know, they, they can't, it's just that we don't have that faith in our Guru. Yes, you're right, Viji. I 100% agree that questions need to be asked. Like, you know there is room for conversation there is room for vichara there's room for all these things you know but at one level those questions will only disappear with faith you know you have to jump you have to jump i remember i uh heard like a lot of similar answers to what you're saying now in college and i was like jala fidget maharaj can solve everything through lambari and bhakti i don't want to study for my final yeah. i'm gonna just do seva i'm gonna go to the gurdwara and I'm going to spend time there and they keep out Johunda, right? Yeah. I'll just study a bit tonight, uh, but nowhere near as much because I was like, I, I, I need to do my Rerasab then. I need yeah. to do my, you know, I, I wasn't reading Barney then. And I was like, I, I need to just go read it. Yeah. I remember the next morning. Uh, so, you know, the school I went to, they used to have this thing called a test bank. And pretty much it was a, a school. Uh, uh, the school gave this facility where students could turn in their old tests and they could access the test bank which had old tests of a given class. And someone in my class had accessed the test bank um, and, and gotten uh, the old test for this class. And normally um, students would go and, and do this for every class, but I hadn't. Um, and it was a friend of mine and he was like, hey, did you go to the center today and get and access your test bank? And I was like, no. He was like, oh, I'm done with mine. You can use this. And I was like, okay, this is 20 minutes before the test. I look at the sheet. And I've never retained information like this. Looked at the sheet once over. Cool. Went inside. It ended up that the professor was taking it easy on everyone and decided to keep the, the new test very similar to the old test that he knew was in the test bank. I think over 90% of the things I read over, was on the test. And that's not just once. That's happened over. When I was a student, it happened over and over again. Instead of studying the entire uh, course or curriculum, even in like real life, it's like we struggle so much. Just do a Do Do Barney, but have that nischip rosa. Maharaj will take care of it. Maharaj, I believe, 
ਕਿ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਨੇ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਵਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਨਾਮ ਬਾਣੀ ਕਰੋ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੁਝ ਸਵਾਰ ਦੂੰਗਾ ਪਰ ਯੂ ਗਾਟ ਟੂ ਜਸਟ ਡੂ ਇਟ ਐਂਡ ਟਰਸਟ ਇਟ ਪਰ ਵੀ ਡੂ ਇਟ ਵਿਦ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਕੋਟ ਇਨ ਆਰ ਇਨ ਆਰ ਮਾਈਂਡਸ ਵੀ ਵੀ ਡੂ ਇਟ ਵਿਦ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਲਾਈਕ ਵੀ ਡੋਨਟ ਕਮ ਫਰਮ ਅ ਗੁੱਡ ਪਲੇਸ ਸਮਟਾਈਮਸ ਆਈ ਫੀਲ ਆਈ ਫੀਲ ਲਾਈਕ ਵੀ ਕਮ ਫਰਮ ਅ ਪਲੇਸ ਆਫ ਗ੍ਰੀਡ ਔਰ ਅ ਪਲੇਸ ਆਫ ਲਸਟ ਔਰ ਅ ਪਲੇਸ ਆਫ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਸਮਵੇਅਰ ਵੀ ਸ਼ੁਡਨਟ ਬੀ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਫਰਮ ਐਂਡ ਆਬਵੀਅਸਲੀ ਦਾ ਗੁਰੂ ਇਜ਼ਨ ਅ ਮੈਜਿਕ ਏਟ ਬਾਲ ਦੈਟ ਯੂ ਗੈਟ ਟੂ ਗੋ ਐਂਡ ਸੇ ਗਿਵ ਮੀ ਥਿਸ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਨ ਯੂ ਸ਼ੇਕ ਇਟ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਸੇ ਯੈਸ ਨੋ ਔਰ ਮੇਬੀ ਯਾ ਆਈ ਰਿਮੈਂਬਰ ਥੋਸ ਡੇਸ I when I was a kid I used to think God could talk to us through those. <laughs> I used to be like if this comes out yes then I'll get a PlayStation. <laughs> and I feel like that's how we take hokumanami nowadays. I feel like we have like an idea of what we want we're like Maharaj I'm going through this problem please bless me please make it work. And then we sh- you know take a hokumanama as if we're shaking an eight ball yeah. and if Maharaj doesn't say ki you know tati vaa na lage par bram sarnai or maharaj doesn't say like sore to mahalla panjwa aage sukh mere meeta paache anand prab kita if it's anything other than that we're like oh guru sahab is angry at me mera kaam nahi banna i'm not going to be able to step forward so i think that even when we're taking hokumaname uh you know to understand maharaj we we need to do a better job of of understanding what maharaj is saying in order to do that we have to read nam bani are you tired by any chance I'm really tired. You want to take a break? Yeah. Okay, cuz I was about to p- throw us into the next topic with the hook and all. Maybe maybe tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> That was good though. This is great. <laughs>